And hello again. Second video, but actually the first lesson, let's say like this. Last time we made a little introduction into what a sketchbook to use and how to test pages uh, with different media to see if your sketchbook is good for pencil, for ink, for color or anything. And now we're actually going to start drawing. Now for the first lesson I wanted to do something uh, very simple and um, as we're going to play around with different media, I'm going to start with the one media that everybody is going to use when drawing, which is the pencil. And in this little lesson, we are just going to use the pencil for shading and texturing. So on pencils, you can find the letters H and B, with HB being the middle value of the pencils, and H being the harder ones and B being the blacker ones and also the, the softer ones. And the numbers beside letters indicate their hardness or their blackness with 9H being the, well, being the hardest one and 9B being the blackest one, the softest one. For this exercise we're first going to look at uh, the different pencils and then I'm going to make a little lighting exercise for those of you who participate in these lessons, which are a little bit more rookie in drawing and really want to know the basics. And then there's going to be a tiny little shading exercise that's really simple and also really relaxing. So yeah, for this, just see what types of pencils you have. If you only have one pencil at hand, I would recommend getting a few different ones. Quick disclaimer, if you want to draw something and you only have one pencil, use one pencil. But if you can afford a few different shades of pencils, go ahead and buy a few different shades and uh, see which one suits you. So for this little exercise, or let's say the technical part of this exercise, I chose the HB pencil, because for me an HB pencil is the all-rounder. It's not too hard, not too soft. You can use it to make light sketchy lines, but you can also already get a little bit of contrast and shading in there. Then to compare it, we have a 2H. When I was younger, I usually, HB was like my darkest pencil that I was going to use. Like HB was always my absolute shadows. So I was a really big fan of uh, drawing with 4H, 2H and H. This has changed now because when you're using only H pencils, you don't get a lot of contrast and it's the really black uh, surfaces that can give you sometimes a really nice play in your drawing. But for now, I'm going to use 2H to show you because sometimes I still use them to make really light sketches. And then for the darker ones, I have the 2B. Um, 2B for me is like making the first, well I indicate my shadows with HB and then I make my first real shadow layer with a 2B and to really darken those shadows I very often use a 6B. That's a little bit old and dirty but it's still working. And my B pencils like 4, 6 and 8B are the ones that I usually let become the tiniest before I throw them away because I don't care if this pencil is long for sketching because I just need it to make darker lines or make shadows more well more prominent stronger darker deeper fill in random word for shadow so I invite you to look at your pencils and choose four or five different ones and uh, just play around with them a bit as I said in the last video, I'm going to leave first two pages, um, oh, one page, yeah. I'm going to leave one page free at the beginning. So later on, I'm going to make a drawing there and I will immediately start on the second page. Now for this exercise, I'm just going to make me some boxes, maybe an open one, smaller one, and just see how my age pencil behaves.
and just go in there, mix in a little bit of light pressure. Look at how your pencil reacts if you um, put pressure on it, because the different thickness and hardnesses of the pencil also make for a different shadow if you push. Like if you have a hard pencil and you push, of course you can get a dark field, but it will be more of a grayish type of field. And you're also going to destroy the whole texture of your paper. So if you want to have a dark shadow and not destroy the texture of your paper, you better use a softer pencil. Now you see that you with H2 or 2H, you can already make a lot of shading. Let's do the same with a um, well-sharpened HB pencil. Just play around. You don't have a you don't have any type of goal with this exercise. You're just using your pencils. You can even make different um, well def different fields like I do. You can only make this one because I think this one is the most useful one. Like seeing what types of shades you can get with how much pressure. So you start with a lot of pressure and gradually you let go and see where it goes. In the other big box I make once the strokes like this, then in the other like a cross hatching thing and I pass over it with one vertical line just to see what it does and yes again I have a little bit more pressure here and also the big black field I don't know if you can very well see this on camera but my HB is already darker than my 2H now for my favorite pencil I changed from favorite from 2H to 2B yeah, just uh, because I, I really like the fact that you can have strong lines and I think a 2B is still not so dark that you have problems erasing it. That's also a thing you have to keep in mind. The darker your pencil is and the stronger you put your line down, the harder it gets to erase. So if you make mistakes, they will be visible on the paper. So one big difference you can see already is that even if you make it darker, you can have a much more of the texture of the paper shining through. Again, we start with pressure and slowly we release it. And for the last big black field. Really put your pressure on there. Really just see what happens. And it gets even darker than the HB. Last but not least, the 6B. It's a little bit short to really work with even pressure here. <laughs> Usually I don't like short pencil because I have, I have really uh, long fingers and big hands. Or big thin hands. A lot of people tell me I should have learned how to play the piano. I never did. I was never interested in music as a child. But everybody says I should. So yeah, you see a clear difference from 2H, from gray to less gray to always more black. Again here we start with pressure and we slowly relieve the pressure. You can also, while drawing with these pencils, you can also feel yourself how hard or soft a nib is. Well, the softer the nib, 
the more your pencil feels like uh, chalk or something. So these are the four pencils I really like to work with. 2H, HB, 2B and 6B for the really dark shadows or to give my drawings much more contrast. And just to show you, big black block with the 2H, I'm putting my pressure down and a big black block with a 6B. Same amount of pressure, more or less. I mean, I'm not a machine. But you can see grayish, blackish. You can even do the same with uh, blocks where you don't put pressure down. Like the first technique, yeah. you go down diagonally, you go up diagonally in a different way, like the opposite way, and you go once vertically so that you don't see, well, using different uh, pencil strokes hides your pencil strokes. Now we make a soft movement with the really black pencil. Even there you can see a big difference. So just take your pencils, if you've never used them or never took the time to get to know them, do this, just play around with them a little bit. Now, for those of you who are a little bit more experienced, you can skip this part that's coming now. I just want to make sure that if we have uh, people watching this who have no experience at all or just little, very little experience in drawing, um, they get a really simple crash course in lighting. And I'm really, really going to, to make this simple because this lesson should not be about lighting but about playing around with pencils. So for this I'm going to start out with my HB. If I don't know which pencil to pick to take with me in a museum or anywhere, I always take HB because HB is the middle value. It does everything more or less good. And this is going to be a very simple lighting exercise. Um, we're going to start with a sphere, sphere, sphere. Just make a circle. I'll say more or less a circle. Like this, it's only a flat circle. Now we're going to imagine that there's a light source from here. So to show a light source on an object, the artist only has the possibility to draw in shadows. The easiest way to remember from where the light is coming, or for purpose of this exercise, you can draw in a three-dimensional arrow like this. Let's make this a little bit more clearly visible. Excuse me for turning my page, it's just easier. Even though I know I'm smudging all my pencil stuff, I should on I should put on my my glove to avoid smudging. I could do that. Let me do that. You know when you have a Cintiq, you always have these uh, gloves to draw on them. They are also very neat to draw on paper to avoid too much smudging of pencil work you've done. So this is more or less our light source. It's coming from the upper left and we're going to put a shadow on this sphere now the way that it represents this light source. So first of all we have to know that this part here is going to be the lightest part, more or less. Now we make a first layer of really soft shadows. You can go in the shape of the object, but you don't have to. In this case, I really just want to put down um, the shadows and I'm not really caring that much if it's going with the object or not. But it is the easiest.
but there you have a very soft layer of shadows. Now you would, for example, change from HB to your next darker pencil and make the next layer of shadows. And the closer you get to the shadow part of your sphere, sphere the smaller you make your shadows, but also the darker you make them. The darker, the more dark. I think it's the darker, the darkest. Yeah. Using English language. Mm -hmm. Very proficient, as you can see. Yeah, you can also use this circle movement. That's one part that's difficult if you want to make lessons like this. If you draw for a long time, you make so much stuff intuitively that you don't know how to explain which way is the best way. I'm going to stay with 2B and just make a few more shadows around here. I'm going to take my 6B and I'm going to make the darkest shadow over here. Which is going to be, in this case, the smallest one. So don't go as far up with your stroke as you would have with the 2B or even the HB. I think I can come back in with my HB because now I can see that I can play a little bit more with the lighter values. I still have room to play with. And another thing is if you have put down a layer of dark pencil color or like of, of dark pencils, you, if you uh, pass over them with a lighter pencil, with a harder pencil, you can push down the pigments or you may, I, I don't actually know what really happens, but you can make darker shadows, even darker by repassing or retouching them with a harder pencil. Because then there's this thing that happens with um, harder pencils. You push down a lot more of the texture of the paper than the dark pencil would. So sometimes in art class, um, years and years ago, we had paintings like or drawings like this. We made all the shadow values and then in the end we repassed this, the whole stuff with a hard pencil to give it to give it much more structure and a little bit more sharpness to it. Also, the edges here so that we can really see the sphere. Just go as you please until it looks right to you. You can really see that this light source is a little bit wrong because if you would put an axis to this you see that the, the axis of my light source would more or less be something like this. So I just colored in my sphere with a more or less upper left light source, but it's not this light source, it is this here actually. This is what happens if you don't pay attention and concentrate too much on your video recording. Anyway, this is like basics of shading. You can do the same exercise with a cube. So 
So you have your more or less three-dimensional cube. And you just have to imagine if you have a light source coming from the front and a little bit right, uh, a little bit left, sorry, you would know that this is the brightest surface. This one would have a tiny little bit of shadow on it. And then the one on the right would be the darkest. I'm just doing this very quickly because I don't want to um, be on the subject of lighting too long, but I really want people who um, haven't done a lot of drawing yet to be able to participate. Oh, one more thing. Before I stop with the lighting, um, we have the light source on our sphere, which is like the shadow on our object. But then again, our object also casts a shadow. So if your light source is, in this case, this one, you can imagine that your object would more or less do something like this, I would say, quickly said, maybe even a little bit longer. So that's not so flat, but more like going to the back because the light is coming from the front. And if you have one clear light source, you also have one really clear shadow. And I would really like my sphere to be visible, so I take my darker pencil and reframe my sphere a little bit. So something more or less like this, maybe a little bit rounder here. Like I said, I really want to do this very, very quickly, just to explain the basics of lighting. Now for the next part of this exercise, you have to come with me into my gallery. So now we're entering the gallery and yes, and the gallery is my Louvre, but also there are a lot of drawings and pictures of mine on the wall and we are especially going for this one. So we are just going to hang this off the wall and take this with us. So these are drawings I made back in 2016. Whoa, okay. Oh, I would have said 18 because I don't feel like it's been such a long time since I've done these. But anyway, I think this motif is really good for this shading exercise because it doesn't have a lot of pressure in it. Like you can see, these are minerals, like I called it mineral design back then. So they are types of uh, crystals or minerals you can find in the ground, but they are, they are fantasy. They are inspired by real existing minerals, but in fact I didn't have um, a picture to look at. All I wanted to do is add these neat little textures and shadings and have like clear crystals or have um, like dark soil with very uh, brilliant crystals in them or matte crystals like this one or anything like draw cracks and stuff. So what I would recommend to you now is uh, just participate with me, draw some crystals. But before you draw those crystals, just go on Google and research some pyrite, research some different uh, crystals, some, some amethysts, some crystals that take, for example, hexagonal forms or anything. Just look at real pictures of crystals and minerals fill your brain with information about real world stuff and then do this drawing with your pencils without any reference. Just think 
of what your crystal should look like. Should it be a hard and clear crystal or should it be like a round crystal? Should it be a dark one? Should it be in earth or should it be encapsulated by other crystals? Like these are different because this one has black dark earth around it and this one doesn't, for example. This one has a texture inside the crystal whilst this one doesn't. Also this one doesn't have a texture and this one is really, this one is the clearest. I mean, there's just like some dark shadings in there and the rest is white. Whilst these two have a much more matte feeling to them. You can also see why I wanted to show you this little um, lighting exercise because you have to think of your main light source. If I just draw for pleasure, I usually take my light source from somewhere to the left because you can see each of these has somewhat a light source from the left. The darkest shadows are always on the right and the lightest are always on the left. Although these are never harshly lit, they're more like lit all around, especially this one doesn't have a really clear light source. So they are well lit from all the sides. But you can see that here is more light than on this face of the crystal. And also this one is much more in the shadow. And this one as well, this one is darker. You can have the shadow of the stone fragments where it's incorporated in. So now I invite you to take your sketchbook and draw your own crystal mineral design. I'm going to do the same myself and I would recommend to just take one page we're going to turn this page where we did our exercises or well, the technical part is done, it's over. We're going to turn this page. You can even, depending on a sketchbook, choose to use this side. I'm not going to, to use it. I'm going to use this one. I'm going to fill up this page with crystal drawings. All right now. I'm just going to make a few little crystal drawings here and I have decided to make them as a time-lapse video because the most important thing for me is that you play around and doodle with this idea yourself. So I actually had to stop my uh, recording of this lesson and I did the time-lapse on another day, um, which, which is fine with me. It is supposed to be like this that you check out your pencils and get loosened up with the pencils and then afterwards you just make a little sketch, a little drawing. Um, in my case it was simply not possible but anyway I wanted you to see these drawings and not rush because I didn't have any more time to make a, a really nice drawing or so. So as you can see I started with a very similar motif than the ones I have or let's say one of the crystals I have on my drawing from 2016. And that's just because I, I just wanted to play. I didn't want to think much. And the only thing I changed is that it uh, broke off a little bit differently on the, on, the bottom, on the bottom part. And the way it is encased in the stone is also slightly different. I also drew a little light source onto the paper Normally I never do this, that's something you only do in your head or you just do it uh, when you're practicing and you don't want yourself to cheat somehow. Uh, I'm cheating always anyway, but <laughs> in this case um, I just wanted to draw it in so that you can see what I was thinking about when I was shading. It is not 100% correct what I did, I think, but it is uh, largely gravitating to having a light source from the upper left corner. Now the second one I tried something that I haven't done on either of the four crystals on my previous drawing and that is having dark crystals. I mean in the introduction I uh, talked to you about is your crystal light, is your crystal dark, is it smooth or is it rough. I had a little bit rougher ones but I never had a smooth dark one so I for this exercise I tried to have like dark smooth blobs that are kind of like glued into or sticking into a very light type of rock. So you just you, you can mix it up you can try different things 
and uh, just always when you start have a specific idea in your head what you want to try out and then try to get to the result and play around like you have to imagine or you have to um, figure out how you would create a dark crystal or a light crystal or dark stone or a light stone all these things you have to think about how you would do it and then you try it out and if it doesn't work you try to get there anyway and then like this you can learn you can see what happened with your plan and at the same time sometimes you can start a drawing and just go with the flow do your thing and see what comes out and then you remember what you did and what result you had so in any way as long as you're drawing and you are thinking about what you're doing noticing your results and like you, you're there you're not absent-mindedly drawing but you're you're really seeing what you're doing and feeling what you're doing you can always learn that's you're always learning the last one is a very simple one because i could see my time running out in this case again because i i think i uh, spent too much time on the on the first one but i still wanted to have more than just two different crystals so i did a third one i think i had like like 10 minutes for the last one or so i added a little crystal on the bottom but uh, Actually, I just wanted to have this weird spongy stone texture, like when you first start out with random cross hatchings and then afterwards you make a whole thing out of it by adding the shadows and drawing over it and then slowly those separate surfaces melt together into one thing. I just wanted to play around with that. And that's the point where this um, drawing fantasy stones, fantasy minerals, things that are inspired by real things but are not copies of real things comes in handy because nobody can tell you that you're making a mistake or anything. You're drawing what you have in your head or what you want to try out or what you want to play with and it is never wrong. And that's my main reason I wanted to um, suggest this exercise because it's really a playful thing. Anyway, I hope this uh, first lesson um, inspired you for your own practice and that you had fun participating in this video. And I will see you next time. Like I said, I try to make one video per week so you can have one day in your week where you play around with some art stuff. So, see you then. Bye!